What's going on everybody? Good morning, happy Saturday. So today I've got a PX9 Cummins Packard engine here that came in with a VGT actuator fault code. I'll show you those fault codes in a second. So I went ahead and set everything up for the, for the shot. We're gonna be replacing the VGT itself, okay? Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I went ahead and removed everything. I went ahead and cleaned up the surface. So there's a couple things you're gonna need to do. This yellow line here just lets you, I just marked it. So this way you know how far the little foot's gonna travel. So it travels maximum to the right, and then it goes over here. You're gonna see the yellow line again. It's gonna go maximum to the left. And then right behind it, you can see that there, there's a little hole. So that hole and this hole need to match up when you're gonna go ahead and install everything and get everything calibrated. So right now what we have is our VGT actuator. This one I ended up purchasing from the guys over at DTIS out there in Fontana. That's the part number that you have there. This is what comes with the little kit. Comes with some zip ties, your new hardware, the actuator itself. Okay, it does have the seals. Comes with a little white grease, which I went ahead and pre-installed. So it's pretty much ready to go. It does come with extra seals. Not sure why, but that's quite all right. You are gonna need your Allen, which is gonna be the number five. And that's pretty much it. So the next thing I wanna do before anything else, I already have the program connected. Um, while I'm connected, I don't have the, sorry guys, let's see here. There we go. So I've got everything pretty much ready to go. I'm gonna to try to film as much of this as possible. Let's get something with, there we go, a little less glare. So first thing first, don't turn on the key yet. This test is very, very simple to do. All right guys, so first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna grab my actuator just like this and I wanna go ahead and plug it in. That's it, that's all you're gonna do. You're gonna go ahead and plug it in. Don't do anything else. Hold on, there we go. So right now our actuator is plugged in. I'm gonna leave this up like this, just for the sake of the video. Next thing you want to do, hold on, there we go. So that's plugged in, it's ready to go. So the next thing I wanna do is open up the ignition. So again, key on, engine off. Do not turn on the truck, just simply turn on the ignition and you have to go through this calibration process. So I went ahead and prepped everything on one end. Truck only has 69,000 miles, it's a 2015, 2016. And again, guys, you do not wanna go ahead and install it yet. You don't wanna do anything other than connect. That's the only thing you wanna do. So right now I have this set up ready to go. I've got my hardware ready to go. And we have our program here launched and ready to go as well. So next thing I wanna do really quick, I'm just trying to film. Let's see here, we're gonna go ahead and connect. We are gonna connect again. And again, just like all Cummins programs, it's gonna ask you if you wanna create an instance. I always do, it makes it a lot easier to do a record in case you wanna go back and do anything later, okay? So a little reference point. So just be patient, it's gonna connect, it's gonna do its thing. There we go. So the next screen is gonna pop up with the image or instance. You can either tag on to the one that you had previous or you can create a new one, doesn't really matter. I think I'm gonna go with a new one just for the sake of this video. So I'm gonna click on new, click on okay. It's gonna go ahead and create the image and it's basically just connecting and communicating and doing what it's gotta do. Once we do that, we're gonna go over to the left side of the screen. I'm gonna show you guys what to do. Again, it's a two-step process and you have to do this. Um, some guys say, oh, disconnect the batteries, put it all together and blah, blah, blah. To me, that doesn't work. Um, it may have worked for one guy in the past, but in my opinion, it's not something that has worked for me. So. I'm not gonna mess with that. Uh, here we go, so you're gonna go to ECM Diagnostic Tests. Next screen that pops up is this one here. And again, hopefully you guys can see that. You wanna go to the second to the last one, which is your VGT actuator, right? VGT Electronic Actuator Installation and Calibration. Very important. Go to your bottom right. You're gonna go to Next. Uh, this is not a functional test of the actuator. Attempting to do this, you gotta read that. Okay, very, very simple. Click on OK. You want to go here to where it says Procedure. Okay, in your procedure, you're going to click on Install Actuator. Now it tells you actuator must be removed from the turbocharger before process can begin. Click on OK. I'm going to click on the bottom right where it says Start. Click, it's going to warn you again. Click on OK. The VGT is going to do its magic at this point. VGT can now be physically installed to the turbocharger. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna leave that screen there. I'm not gonna do anything else. 
All right, guys, so hopefully this is a good shot. Let's grab our little socket extension. Again, you're gonna need some of these tools here. You don't need to do anything else. Once this is aligned properly, you're pretty much ready to go, guys. So just be patient. Again, O-rings are there. You don't need to install anything or do anything else to that. And you're gonna go ahead and just literally present it there. It's, you're gonna have a little, you're gonna have to jiggle it just a little bit, guys. So there we go, look at that. Boom, all done. So I'm hoping the camera's showing this. I, I like to run them just with my fingers, get that all in there, okay? Put one on one side. Done. Okay, so now, let's see here. We're gonna put one on the bottom right corner, if you guys can see that there. I know the angle's probably not the best, guys, but I'm doing what I can. Let's see here. Same thing. Just run it down with your fingers, guys. Pretty simple. I like to kind of work on a little bit of an X pattern. Put the top right one. I haven't, I have not tightened it down. I'm just gonna run it down with my fingers. I'm gonna do the same one with the bottom left. Again, a little bit of the anti seize on there. Makes things a little bit easier. Bottom left corner. And that's it, guys. So run it down, run it down, run it down. And that's it. So grab your little ratchet. 3 8 it works just fine. Tighten it down. Uh, I don't know what the torque spec is on that. I don't know if there is a torque spec. Obviously, you want to, you get to kind of just feel it, guys. So when you tighten this down, it's in, done. Let's do the same thing with the bottom. Let's do, I don't need an extension for the bottom ones. So get the idea. Let's go to the bottom left. done okay remember you got to do a little snug because again you have the o-ring seals that are back there and that's for the coolant so right now all the coolant has been removed i'm not going to add the coolant yet let's see here let's go to this bottom all right so i'm not really doing the next pattern here but i'll do that i'll do the little pattern there we go so done let's put our extension back on there ready to go so same thing we're going to tighten that down All set. Okay, so now, next step, get back to your program. You want to go to the bottom, you want to go to the middle left where it says calibrate actuator. Same thing. It's going to give you a little heads up, a little warning. It must be mounted. Click on OK. Bottom right. Click on Start. It must be mounted. Click on OK. It's a simple pass or fail. We should not have any issues. Uh, calibration in progress. So I'm imagining that little gear's moving. That lever's gonna shift left, shift right, do whatever it's gonna do. And look at that, all done. Actuator calibration completed successfully. We're all set. Click on back. We might have a code still there, I don't know. Ah, uh, there we go, engine to rate. Okay, now this code will sometimes stay there until you turn on the truck and actually prove that you fixed the problem, okay? But we shouldn't have any more VGT codes. Coolant level low, of course, that's because there's no coolant in there. Once you go ahead and start the truck, this code should go away. Okay, it goes away within seconds. So let's get the coolant in there. Let's go ahead and fire it up. Um, all these codes should go inactive and then we're ready to go. Okay, so. All righty, guys. And just like that, antifreeze has been added to the truck. We went ahead and started the truck. And again, it's a code that will clear on its own. Let me see if I can, there we go. Hopefully that's a little bit better for you guys. So the code is clear. It just will give you the engine protection torque derate. Condition exists. Once you start the truck, the truck will do what it's gotta do. And look at that, all by itself, all the codes are now inactive. So that's a good thing. What I wanna do is let it warm up. I'll try to do a regen just to confirm that we don't have any issues or actually just do a good road test. The road test will simply uh, help you confirm that your VGT is all done. So again, if you're getting this code, 1897, 1898, VGT actuator controller, bad intelligent device, VGT actuator controller out of calibration. If you're getting something like that, chances are your actuator itself is bad or there's something binding, which might be your turbo. And that's pretty much it guys. So if this video helps somebody out or it helps you guys out, all I ask is a few things. 
As always, guys, give it a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe. I appreciate you guys watching. Have a great weekend. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there holding it down and uh, putting in their work and turning their wrenches. Guys, have a great day.